this meeting. I've started recording. So thanks. Uh, today's August 13th. Wanda, I have just a few things that I'd like to talk about, and I put them in the minutes here. Um, the first is just logistics of ChaosCon, which is a week from today, right? So um, for those of you with respect to conference registration that are speaking, have you been contacted by Stephanie at the Linux Foundation to talk about details, attendees, anything like that? Okay. I don't believe so. Okay. Um, are you also registered as an attendee? I, I think I should be. I think I just did it like a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Stephanie is going to reach out. She should be reaching out if I'll ping her again just to get okay. time on that. But she's going to give all attendees kind of the logistics, you know, because they want what they want is attendees to go to the main Linux Foundation registration booths, and that's where you can pick up your ChaosCon badges. Okay. So we're not going to actually have the badging at the site, but everybody should be notified, so we should be all good there. Um, and then also at the main registration site will be things like, um, you know, the pronoun stickers and, you know, those stickers that are like, um, they're like green and orange and pink. And they say things like, if I'm wearing a, a, uh, a, an orange sticker, don't take pictures of me. You know what I'm talking about? You, you know, or, the, yeah. or the stickers will say things like, if I'm wearing a green sticker, it's okay to come up and talk to me. Yep, so they're going to have all of those at the main registration booth as well. I had asked to get them over at the ChaosCon site, but she said they're just going to centralize everything. Um, so you should be all good there. Um, conference, this is mostly just FYIs for folks. Conference logistics, we're all good in terms of timing with coffee and snacks. <laughs> so uh, the critical components, coffee will be ready at 8 o'clock because the registrations or the kind of the doors open at 8 o'clock. Um, the conference actually starts at nine o'clock. So I think we're all good kind of logistically in that regard. Um, we're bringing a bunch of chaos stickers. We also have some chaos poker chips uh, that we're bringing as well. And then um, I have some other things for people as well. So everybody will get that information. So or get those little, little things, which is nice. Um, there is a chaos board meeting at uh, open Source Summit North America. Ray, you should actually have that information. I think the only, th I sent it out a long time ago, but I'll send it out again this week. The only thing that wasn't on there was the room that we're in, but I have that now. So I'll send that out and um, also an agenda. So just kind of FYI. Cool. Yeah, I, I think you sent out an email. I'm not sure if, uh, if there was a calendar invite that was sent out. I don't think I did. I think I just yeah, okay. sent it. Just okay, cool. FYI. It's only an hour. Yeah, it's on a Wednesday, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's only an hour. And if there's, we're just not going to have a ton of time. You know, it's mostly, I think it's going to be updates to the board. But if there's anything that you want, Ray, or, and I'll say this to everybody as well, to put on the agenda, just ping me and I can easily get it on there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep. Anything else with OSSNA? And chaos con knock wood, I think we're pretty good. All right. Um, Kevin, are we are we asking for the slide decks from people? Will we do that post hoc? I had a few logistics on that. Uh yes, we do wanna we do wanna ask for those. Uh okay. the sooner we do that the better. Although I, I imagine that uh most of the slide decks aren't aren't quite ready for presentation. So. <laughs> That's usually the way it goes. Uh, Mine included. <laughs> Mine included. In, well, uh, <laughs> if we could get them after that. Uh, KSCon Europe, we uh, we individually asked. I think we made. Uh, I think there was an announcement made, and then okay. we also individually asked uh, the presenters to to send their slide decks. I, my guess is it'll be easiest easiest to just rustle them up after the fact. Because at that point, I know Ray will be done. Because he yeah, presented. Exactly. <laughs> so it's probably easier and less annoying to just ask for it then. Um, the other thing I had was, Kevin, I know we're, I know you're not going to be there, but we're recording all of the talks as well. So I had sent out an email to the presenters 
asking if it's okay if we record, I'll do that again. And same with the lightning talks. I'd like to get these, um, the, the recorded presentations up on a private channel first so people could maybe see their presentations before we post them. A few people have asked to be able to see them and maybe that's just something we wanna provide for everybody. You know, I, <laughs> I don't know, you've all presented. Sometimes you're like, mm, I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> can, can, we, can we not save that forever <laughs> on YouTube? Um, Kevin, is, do you know if an uh, easy way to do this with YouTube, just a private uh, channel you can share with folks or something? Yeah, I, be I believe so. I will say on the, the last two times we've done this, we actually have reached out to the individuals to get them to sign off on it before we've put it online. Okay, I'd like to do that again this year. So maybe we just did that. I, did your workflow work fine on that one? In terms of uh, yeah, I think so. Google. Okay. Okay, so maybe just follow. I'm taking notes. Follow last year's. Oops. Type uh, approach for video recording approval. What about pictures? What did you do with pictures last year? Did you just take them and then post them? Uh, I didn't take any pictures. Uh, Sean, Sean took pictures. Okay. Just a sign out front maybe for John's comment. Yeah. So, uh, I, I used to report to shit tons of studio and network lawyers doing yeah. just this <laughs> for, okay. for television and film. Just put a sign out front, trying to kick around and like have people. Yeah, nah. Just a disclaimer, and if they want to opt out, they can say it at that time. Uh, no, if they want to opt out, they don't enter the room. Oh, okay. <laughs> is, is generally okay. how we've approached that. Don't enter the area if you don't want to be filmed. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's easy to check. That might be part of the standard like event registration. It it might be. It might be on yeah. the Linux uh, events registration. Yeah. Why don't I take yeah, a look? That's a good point. Yeah. Then we're covered. If... Yeah, because this is a Linux Foundation yeah. thing. We're under their umbrella. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll take a look. Is it, I still think we should give people the opportunity to preview their recorded talk. It, people may just yeah, definitely. auto sign off. They may be like, yeah, whatever. Don't I don't care to edit anything. We don't have that many talks and we've done it in the past. One, so one of the reason one of the reasons we've been doing that in the past is because we've actually had that request from from several people because they wanted to make sure that they weren't saying anything that their employer would uh, like them not to say. That's uh, <laughs> so okay. Okay. Um, that sounds all good. Um, I'm gonna now that John is on. Um, did we come up with the kind of a solution for the social media stuff? Is that done? Uh, solution with regards to which part? I did the oh, sample. Yeah, just like how we're gonna? Are we just gonna post them on the governance? Oh, as to where the things were gonna live. Yeah, yeah, I thought I thought that that was just going to go under governance. Okay, I, think um, so. I don't. Do you want to? Do you want me to just do a pull request to place those files up there, yeah. or is it? It's it's just a readme with a link to the doc, or do you want me to export an actual, like file oh, of the Google think, Slides thing? Did that readme go in already as a pull request? I think the way you had it, I think you had an example, didn't you? Wasn't uh, it? Yeah, I think I had a readme just with a link. It was like a five um, line. Read yeah, me. the social the social media read me. I can yeah. just add links to that. Sure, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, or we can do it too if you have. Okay, it's no big deal. We'll just if that was the solution, we'll just get that in. Yeah, it wasn't clear that we did that. That was the <laughs> agreed upon thing. You so, have you have no action item. Fine. You have no action item. We'll we'll take care of it. <laughs> okay. I don't need to over process the situation. <laughs> uh, all right. So the, the one thing that I kind of want to talk about today was um, 
Moving forward, so usually around this time, we like to set out a few agenda items. And um, like to think about kind of strategically what we're gonna be doing over the next year. And um, I put a couple things in the notes. Again, the minutes, I'll post them here. That might be fine, John. Okay. So one of my um, one of my big things now that we have we have kind of three things that have happened over the last year. Um, we have our first release of metrics, as you're all obviously familiar with. We have a really nice set of of tooling, whether it's Grimoire Labs or Augur, for the deployment of these metrics. Um, and we're starting to get a, a huge volume of data that these tools can actually pull and, and store. So we kind of have these three things. One is metrics, one is tools, and one is data. Um, one of the goals for me this year is, probably in the next six months, is to really identify the deployment of all metrics, whether it's in tooling or in, um, say, programs. And what I mean by programs is that some of the metrics aren't easily deployed in tooling. So, for example, the DNI metrics are not easy to necessarily deploy in tooling. Um, but we, the intention is they can still be deployed. They're just deployed in, in different ways. And so one of the things I'd really like to do is, is make a push to get all of the metrics that can be deployed in tooling to be deployed in tooling and to work to get the DNI metrics or the metrics that can't be deployed in tooling deployed in some other way, whatever that way might be. I think part of our goal is to have these metrics, not only think about what the metrics are, but to, to have them have a home <laughs> that, that people can access and actually use and think through. Um, so I, last week, I, maybe a week or two ago, I kind of showed a way that we can start tracking, tracking this. But this is a concerted effort on my part now, is to really find, find homes for these and, and tell stories about how these metrics are making an impact, whether it's deployed through tooling or the way people think about projects or events or whatever it might be. Um, so that's, that's one big item for me. Does anybody have comments for that? Yeah, I, I had started, we had a conversation several weeks ago about possibly building out some tooling for things like the DNI metrics, things that yeah. would be uh, uh, metrics that would be acquired mainly through, through like surveys. Yeah. Right. Um, and I had set up a, I set up a Lime survey install on one of my servers and enabled API access on it. I don't know if we want to try building anything against that and collecting data that way, or if we want to do something that's even more accessible, like a, like a Google form to a spreadsheet and, and if that stuff out into Elastic. Uh, if, if, uh, if anybody wants my involvement in kind of the, you know, how do we hang that stuff together side of things, I'd, I'd be happy to be involved. That'd be fun. So, and you're talking particularly on the metrics that don't have like a trace data component. Correct. Yeah. 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 So I think it's, yeah, any way that we can think through this would be, because I don't think it's easy. No, no, it's not. I mean, if you, I, I don't know how y'all have been working the last couple of years when it comes to kind of actually the, the product development side of things. If you write user stories or the set of requirements or how you've approached that. Um, We've been doing some I, user stories kind of, but there was pretty ad hoc in some of the working yeah. groups. So say like the evolution working group. Yeah. Would, work on some, they were calling them use cases for a while, but they're fundamentally user stories about how these metrics are making an impact in the world or how people are deploying them. Yeah. And I'm, I'm super interested in like, how do we actually capture them and put them into a place where we can, you know, visualize them in some meaningful fashion. Um, it, it feels like there's a, there's quite a bit of work to do there. Well, maybe um, you and I can kind of work offline maybe in this yeah, and I'd be happy to just think through ways that we can, because yep. I hate all this work to be done and then they just kind of sit there as metrics. <laughs> so, so um, in, in my opinion, um, I think all of the work that we do should be focused on Augur and Grimoire labs. Um, you know, we've got those two as sort of reference platforms. Yep. I don't think we have enough resources to spread ourselves thin really much, much beyond that. So I'll just, I'll just put that out there for consideration. Okay. Yeah. 
So are those, I, I'm assuming that those are separate open source sure. communities with their own projects, teams, and... They're actually, they're both open source projects as part of the chaos project. So Augur is a piece of software that can deploy the trace data metrics and Grimoire Labs is also a piece of software, open source software. Okay, so does, so does the chaos project as a whole include the developers who work on those? Yes. Okay. Yep. I, so, I, I, I go looking for those working sessions. So actually, they're yeah, they're not, they're they don't run quite like this. So Sean Goggins, you uh -huh. know, he's the yeah. auger, he's the auger lead. Okay. So and then uh, Daniel Esquerdo, Georg Link, they all work for the organization Batergia, and Batergia right, right. More Labs is the the open source tool that Bater it's the open source product that Batergia has. It's right. the product that okay. Batergia has open sourced, if I can say my words correctly. Okay, so we can make a point of chatting with them and seeing where we yep. think the metrics would better live, right, in terms of data collection. Yep, and how they live and how they're represented in these tools. Yep. That's, okay. they're there. Sounds like fun. They're there in the tooling. It's just making a, an explicit connection between, hey, this is a chaos metric, and hey, this is its deployment in Grimoire Lab, or this is the chaos metric, and this is its deployment in Yeah, in that makes sense. Um, okay, uh, Andy, I'm still going to look at the DNI stuff, even if it's not trace data. <laughs> I'll use my own, I'll, I'll at least use my own spare time on that one. So <laughs> while I'm biking back and forth to work, I'll think about it. <laughs> but point well taken. Um, all right, cool. Any other thoughts on this? Well, one, one thought is, you know, to John's point, um, maybe we could, uh, have a little bit of a of a better organization around the around that tooling. Um, you know, we've got we've got sort of this nice weekly meeting structure to to discuss lots of elements, but we don't have a way to really talk about software specifically. I so I I do I do think on the very very near horizon there is a there's a proposal to have a meeting an hour before this one. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. It's 11 o'clock my time and nine o'clock your time. And, sure. um, but an hour before this one to do just that. Uh huh. Okay. So I don't know if that is too early for folks on the West coast. No, it's fine okay. for me anyway. Okay. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I usually start my day at seven anyway and just okay. try to run out of time for this stuff. Okay. So that's, that's the, um, tentative on the drawing board right now to be, because I think a lot of the communication for those right now largely occurs on uh, Slack and in uh, via the repositories, but it's not like this style. And if you would like, like this style, that would be which, good. Which by the way, might be okay. You know, maybe that is the optimal way is just to say, hey, forget this weekly call. You yeah. know, you want you want to participate. <clears throat> you know, sure. jump on yeah. the tracker and. Yep. But but uh, if that is the preferred style, maybe just making that explicit would be great. There is some to me. It, it maybe it's just me. I I really like the weekly forcing function that is this meeting. It it closes action items. It kind of reorients people on the same page. So. Um, okay. Cool. Thank you, point well taken. Um, I'm gonna be meeting for software. Um, okay, so then the other thing is, I'm sorry, is there anything else on this issue? Much appreciated. Okay, so the other thing is, um, <laughs> here's here's more, here's, here's more stuff to do. So I'm looking at you, Andy. <laughs> so we have, we have metrics, tools and, and we have a lot of data and there's a, I think a lot of you can, can suspect this or guess this or you've heard it is that there's a lot of interest in being able to have predictive power in this work. So a lot of the, a lot of what uh, occurs is kind of lifting back the, the hood or opening the hood on what's going on, but it's not necessarily predictive. It doesn't forecast at all. It tells you what is currently happening so you can understand historically then how to move forward. Um, this comes up all the time. 
like every, almost every conversation I have is, can you tell me <laughs> if this is going, if this project is going to fail? It's a fork. I mean, is that even feasible question to ask? It's, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like saying, can you predict what the stock market of GM is going to be next year? Like the answer is. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, you can do the, you can do the machine learning models with some degree of confidence, right. And just put a degree of confidence in them. And, right. and it's, good precedence for running that inside elk but you know uh, but the i think the i think the challenge is regarding community health and you probably heard me talk about this on on my soapbox number of times like the metrics doesn't tell you everything about the community no i know the community fail for a lot of reasons and then you know like it's so I, I think like I think some like execs or managers like ask that questions all the time. And, yeah, yeah, all the time. But like you can ask, but my answer is typically the same. And is there any yeah. is there any value in in yeah. talking about predictive capabilities between, yeah. between? I mean, the better way to phrase a conversation might be: What are some of the early warning signs, if you will? I mean, like. You know, are there are like early warning signs that you can look for in the community and metrics can, to a certain extent, can help with that, but it doesn't give you the full picture. Sure. No, it certainly can't tell you, like, will this project fail in the next six months? Yeah, I mean, right, right. But so, can we, could we say things like, is it even possible? Again, with the, we have metrics now, we have tooling, and we have so much data. Can we start thinking about, you know, correlations between metrics? I mean, these are, we're starting to get into predictive spaces. So in my sense. experience, um, a lot of business discussions really center around comparables. People will sit around and they'll say, oh, this project is, is similar to this other project that succeeded because of X, Y, and Z. It's different. It's different from another project, you know, for, for some other reasons. Yep. To the extent that we could use our metrics to kind of automatically generate comparables to say, hey, this project is most like some other project, um, gives, I think would, would give a way for people to have sort of meaningful discussions. It's not, it's not necessarily a prediction, but, but um, it is really useful to, to guide decisions to be able to generate comparables and to be able to say why a particular project is similar or different to another project. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think um, we were talking like less than a week ago about how we can't make, uh, we can't make determinations on a project based on what we know about it. Like we're not going to be the people to say yes or no on something or if right. a project is doing well or not. So I feel like that kind of goes in the same vein. It's kind of more about making an educated guess and like trying to say, how not how we feel about it, but how we know from what we know already. That's a really good point about not making value judgments because I know Georg and I have had that conversation a couple of times and leaving the value judgments to the projects themselves. That's that's a very good point. Um, I would note kind of to to Andy what you were saying a moment ago to you uh, when we're talking about comps comp comparisons. Um, this might actually be a really good point in time as this stuff starts getting deployed for the first time for us to kind of work out a, a list of scenarios in project life cycles that we would likely see over the next year or two of collecting metrics. Cause this is a, a really time driven thing, right? Uh, rather than getting to two years down the road and saying, Oh, it'd be really useful for us to have a baseline around some leading indicators for projects that fail. Right. I mean, we could, come up with maybe half a dozen or a dozen scenarios now and tie those to some of the metrics we know we can collect and say, we, we make, we have a theory that if we see indicators that do X, Y, and Z, that this may represent a failing project, what is, you know, in two years, in the next two years, will a project that's implemented this fail? And then let's look at the Delta between those two metrics. And then you have a baseline for comparison. I think if we, if we set up some sort of, I guess baselining project for better or worse now with some I, some scenarios we assume will happen over the next two years, then that that's probably a useful thing for us to do. I mean, it is a, a longitudinal thing, right? 
So is this, I think this actually ties in with what you were talking about too, Ray. You had, I had have in the notes here, like what are the early warning signs to take a look at? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. Okay. Yeah. I just, I'm just trying to, <laughs> I agree that remaining agnostic is important. The, the right. logic doesn't say good or bad, <laughs> you know, in, in any way, shape or form. I totally agree. And that's been part of the, part of the DNA of the project since the get-go. But I think we can always strive towards providing better transparency and perhaps actionability, like things that you can do or things that you might want to think about while remaining agnostic. I, I, I guess I'm always trying to, to provide more value in the project <laughs> while retaining the core of what we're trying to do. And more transparency is a good thing for me. And if that transparency is written somewhere along the lines of what are the early warning signs that we can detect based on the existing set of metrics and then be able to see you later, John, and then be able to compare that against my project, which is similar, that maybe captures a bunch of what we're talking about here. Did I say that right? What are the early, what are the early warning signs? based on the metrics we have. Is that full, full stop sentence? What are the early warning signs? What might be early warning signs based on the metrics we have? And then Andy, how does that play in with the comparison? So now that we know these early warning signs, does that project compare to my own? Yeah. Okay. We could also maybe write it the other way is what are the projects that compare to my own? How have they done in the past? You know, from a, from a growth or a decline perspective, it almost doesn't matter. And how do we understand their metrics as evolving over time? You know what I mean? So you would be project A, you would say project B is quite comparable to mine. That's the one I want to take a look at. It's older. So let me take a look at the existing set of metrics and and understand how they performed over time. So it's an early warning sign or an early warning indicator or an early, wait, not early, early warning sign or early, what's the opposite of warning? Early positive sign? Early, I, don't I don't know. Let's <laughs> early, early indicator or however you want to put it. Early warning positive. I don't know. It's weird that warning doesn't have an opposite, but Okay, this is good. Okay. All right, I, I don't have a solution here for any of this. I'm just, these are things that are on my mind for the next, to the next year. Are there any other things that people have on their own personal to-do list? I have, uh, I have one thing uh, that I'd like to talk about. Okay, and this is specifically for value. Sure. Um, I think that um, I think that the working group would benefit a lot by injecting a perspective of people from the outside. Uh, we are, um, you know, a group of academic and software people. Yep. So we're, you know, bringing our own perspectives into this discussion. I think it would be useful to involve for value, two types of people. One is um, people who actually work in open source program offices. Okay. And the other is um, for value, I'd like to, you know, connect with like an economist or um, a strategy consultant or an investment banker to have them give a, a kind of a business or an economic point of view about the economic value of these metrics. How do they think about it? Okay. And so my idea for doing that would be just to grab a, a small group of people in each category. It could be like two or three. Yep. And um, have them twice a year just, you know, review a report that we produce or review metrics or review something that we give them okay. just to get a little bit of dialogue going and maybe to get a different perspective. Um, Almost like a sub, like a 
Steering committee? Yeah, a steering committee is exactly what I got in mind. So very, very lightweight. Or maybe a focus group. Or focus group or, or something like that. Okay. So very lightweight uh, commitment on their part f for time, but a way for them to be involved, a way for them to maybe give some perspective that, that we don't have. Mm -hmm. Um, perhaps opportunities for networking, you know, doing outreach, that sort of thing. Um, and it would be kind of like just meeting on your weekly, your biweekly calls or something along those lines you would have. Well, I think in really lightweight, like, like yeah. maybe, maybe we would ask them for uh, feedback like, like twice a year. Yeah. Okay. You know, maybe, maybe when, maybe that goes along with uh, a metrics release. Okay. Or, or perhaps, you know, before a metrics release, I think it'd be really interesting to, to say, hey, here's why we're doing this. Here's why we think it's important. What do you think? Okay, that's a great idea. Can I, can I steal that idea? Of course. <laughs> so, I mean, one of, one of my kind of um, operational things for the chaos project is with respect to all of the working groups, right? Making sure that they have strong representation, that they have people leading the efforts in those working groups. And that's a really great idea. Um, just a really great idea of connecting the working group with more than just the people who attend those calls. Yeah. So I might, if you don't mind, I would like to circulate that as a potential for all the working groups. I think for open source program office, we have a few participants, right, that are part of the community on a regular basis. Yes. Yeah. So that yeah. one's relatively that simple, I think. Be, that part would be easy. Yeah. yeah. I think so too. And I think because of the way you've the way you've talked about it with the pretty pretty low overhead commitment. And I mean it, pretty much just off the cuff feedback, it sounds like is what you're looking for. Um, it may also be a way to identify people to participate in the community more regularly. That's, I'm always looking for a path to help that as well for every working group. Yeah, it could be like a stealth recruiting or, yeah. you know, outreach. Sort yep, of. I think, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Okay, great idea. Um, ha, okay. Um, Do you need a hand doing that? Do you want? Of course, I'd, I'd like <laughs> to hand. Uh, so, so one thing I was planning on doing was just making that part of our talks in uh -huh. San Diego next week, just to say, hey, we are looking for this. We're looking for participation. You know, volunteers, please contact us. And then, and then beyond that, um, uh, if anyone has got ideas of of people who would be good to participate in that please please send them to me and um and beyond that you know i can just put together a list i can share it on our value call see yeah. what y'all think and if if you like it you know i can just put in some calls uh to yeah. you folks super idea yeah. okay I'm just gonna, okay okay um great anything thanks andy anything else from the value on that andy for the objectives for the year, for the six months? Uh, no, you know, if we, if we can, um, if we can get a working instance of, of Augur or Grimoire, mm -hmm. and then, you know, get some eyes on with, with some outside people, I think that'd be a great accomplishment for the next six to 12 months. Right on, okay, cool. Uh, all right, anything else from, from folks? These are really great ideas. Um, Anything else from folks in terms of next year? All right. Uh, if not, I'm actually done. I've made it through my items. I had my two things I wanted to bring forward, make sure the floor was open for other things that people want to bring forward. I'll probably bring this issue up again in terms of strategic directive at the chaos board meeting, um, as well as in two weeks. Um, we're not meeting obviously next week. I'll see most of you in San Diego. So looking forward to that. Um, Anyway, thanks for your time, and I'll see you in about a week. Well, thanks. Thanks, everybody. All right. See you later.